this. Please rise in body and spirit.
hearts and our minds to receive you. So I ask on this time, on this morning, that we are gathered here together, that we allow your presence to enter into us fully and completely. I ask that this time together be blessed, and that we know that when we have left here, that we know that we have been in the house of God. So blessings I ask, and blessings may we receive. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Please be seated. And welcome everyone here to MCC United Church of Christ in the Valley. How's everybody doing this Memorial Day weekend? I'm Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, senior pastor here at this, yes, at this great church. I didn't say it this week. No, I'm really I'm honored and delighted to be here with you, and I'm so glad to see so many of you here, uh, some who haven't been here in a while and others who uh, are new. For those of you who this is your first time, I'd like, if you wouldn't mind, just to raise your hand so we can acknowledge your presence, Kim. <laughs> Welcome. Kim has shared that uh, she's uh, been was at MCC in Alabama, right? Yes, um, but yet has been here about 20 years, right? And has finally found us. So, please make sure you welcome her here today. And Stanley, welcome to you, Stanley. We've, as he said, we've been best friends for minutes. <laughs> Overwhelming emotions. We're glad you're with us. And Sean, your beloved, is here. And so good to see you, too, as well. So welcome to each and every one of you. As I said, I'm glad you were here to worship. Uh, as you know, you would have received a, a, a packet of some things in, as you came in from our fabulous ushers. It is the order of worship. Uh, it, as it goes through, you'll see what's coming up next. Uh, but we always have surprises. <laughs> Down here are a few announcements I want to call your attention to. Tonight is a really amazing evening for us and an incredible opportunity. Uh, we, there was, uh, as you, many of you know, uh, there was a need for a place to host a Muslim Christian iftar. An iftar is the breaking of the fast for 30 day for Ramadan which is a time of, uh, for Muslim uh, community to do inner reflection, uh, forgiveness of sins, et cetera. Uh, they, there's a fast every day for, for 30 days. And at suns, from sunrise to sunset. And at sunset, they break the fast and, uh, and have what's called an iftar, which is the breaking of the fast, <coughs> and uh, a celebratory meal. And this year, Muslims for Progressive Values uh, was looking to do, they did one Muslim and Jewish community, um, and they wanted a Muslim Christian um, a one to happen so that there can be dialogue, you know, having a meal, sharing a meal, and being with one another. We are the host for that tonight. So I'm gonna invite you to come back at 7.30 uh, and join together. It is a potluck, you're invited to bring something that feeds eight no pork products, please. And that, yes, that includes ham, May Reverend Megan. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I, I truly invite you to come back and, and we'll be having, uh, this will be transformed into our, into our dining hall. So uh, it, it's really a special time. So see me afterwards, so just let me know so that we can uh, uh, doubly confirm with them about how many folks are gonna be here. So uh, it is free, by the way, so there's no charge for it, just your presence. Um, what else is happening? Well, there's some volunteer opportunities coming up. Uh, we are going to be having a keep calm, it's cleaning day. Uh, <laughs> the end of June, it's not for a month, but I want to put that on your cal put, have you put that on your calendars. But next week, uh, next weekend is at a, our sister church, our sibling church, brother sister church, uh, Founders MCC. They, uh, the Spanish speaking congregation is celebrating their 26th anniversary. And as some of them joined us for our anniversary, you're invited to join them. On Saturday, there is a, a fabulous um, concert drag show uh, that they celebrate. Yeah, so I'll be there for that. And then, of course, they have their, um, at 1.30 after um, our church, they, they're celebrating. So just, I do a lot for God. <laughs> And the answer is no, I won't be. <laughs> I lost my drag dress when I moved. Oh, darn. <laughs> but right around the corner, 
right around the corner is uh, is Pride in in uh, uh, West Hollywood, Los Angeles, uh, on Pride uh, Sunday on that weekend. If you're going to be going to the parade and are going to miss church here on Sunday, you can join Founders for the, um, we're going to um, be able to. They're having a five o'clock Saturday evening service. We're having our 10:30 Sunday morning service. So there's no excuse to miss church. So whether you're going to go or not. And then, of course, there's an interfaith uh, service uh, on the boulevard. I'll be at that. Reverend Megan will be blessing us with the message here. And Valley Pride is coming up in August that we will be playing a huge part in. I did, by the way, just to share with you, I uh, was uh, contacted by the folks who are doing San Gabriel Pride, um, which happens in Pasadena. And they're looking for, they were looking for um, some help in doing an interfaith service there for that, which I was excited to do. I think I've done one or two. Uh, but that's coming up, and, I, and so we'll be able to be a part of that and have a, a booth there and such. It sounds like a really fun pride, too. Um, it, we also will have received a prayer card. We absolutely believe in the power of prayer. If you have a prayer or a praise you'd like to share, or both, um, please fill this out and turn it in the offering plate. If it is confidential, please circle yes, and we will not speak it aloud. Uh, but if it is not confidential, we will share it at communion. We also are looking, I'm looking for folks who are willing to be on a prayer team uh, who will lift people up in prayer throughout the week. See me afterwards, I'll tell you what that entails. If again, you have any change of address, or as I said, you are new here, please fill this out. It's our information we can keep in touch with you, especially via email. And of course, we do believe we are a, uh, do believe in supporting the work of God financially as well as with our time. So you can use this for your financial <coughs> gifts, or of course, if you're into uh, if you're into computers, you can use Breeze. But that's another story. So now is uh, and happy Memorial Day, as was said um, by Elaine. We'll speak more of that in a few minutes. But to all of us who are here, welcome, and let's turn to one another and welcome each other with a sign of Christ. <laughs>
today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 13 from the message. Listen to what the Spirit has for you today. No one's ever seen or heard anything like this. Never so much as imagined anything quite like it. What God has arranged for those who love God. But you've seen and heard it because God's Spirit has brought it all out into the open before you. The Spirit, not content to flirt around the surface, dives into the depths of God and brings out what God planned all along. Whoever knows what you're thinking and planning except you yourself. The same with God, except that God not only knows what you're thinking, but lets us in on it. God offers a full report on gifts of life and salvation that is being given to us. We don't have to rely on the world's guesses and opinions. We don't have to learn by this reading books or going to school. We learned it from God, who taught us person to person through Jesus, and we're passing it on to you in the same first-hand, personal way. This ends our readings. May God open up these words in our hearts and our minds. <clears throat> Please sing along if you know the words. You are my strength when I am weak. You are my treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in Worthy is the name. You know, there's uh, something I'll share in a few minutes, um, but it was, it's called Reclaiming Jesus. It's something that I ran across, it was really interesting. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting that, that when you see other people saying stuff that, you know, we've been talking about for a while, I'm like, did, did they get it from us, or is it just, you know, kind of out there in the universe, right? 
And one of them is about reclaiming Jesus. About saying, you know, Jesus, who is this Jesus? You know, what, 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 what message did he, did he and does he have for us? And who, what is it that we as followers of Jesus are to do? And, what, and I, after I had uh, read about it and saw a, a, a video of a message on it, what cut, went through my head was the name of Jesus, Lane. And, so, and, and, and I know you didn't know that, but as you were saying, you know, talking about Jesus. You know, Jesus is really, truly, I believe, about love and about compassion and about finding ways to build bridges with one another. In fact, finding ways for us to find healing within our hearts and our minds and our souls. About creating a different world, about creating a world that is heaven here on earth. We've been talking a lot about that lately, and, and this week and next week, one of the things I'm going to be talking about is how, are we, how can we recommit ourselves to this church, to this body, of Christ, to this body who has a mission, truly, I believe, to bring that message of compassion and love of Christ to the world. What dreams do we have? What visions is, are that, that we have in our hearts and our minds? And so what dreams have we had? What is it that we want to do? What it gifts has God placed upon your heart and my heart to bring into this world? And sometimes, you know, in this day and age, we don't think about dreaming much, do we? You know, I remember growing up, I may or may not have said this, but, you know, that old saying, you know, you can't fight City Hall. Yeah, my dad made the mistake of telling me that once. <laughs> yeah, after, yeah. I didn't believe him. God, I have fought city halls and state governments. I've done so in love. I've done so by saying, you know, justice and equality is truly meant for all of us. And it's not just because of who we might love, but it's who we are on the color of our skin, who we are by our age, our abilities, our size even. We are all truly equal in the sight of God. When Jesus said, whosoever loves, whosoever, it was not followed by a caveat. Right? Whosoever, except. There are no exceptions in the house of God. There are no left outs. And I believe that as a people of faith, that's one of the things that we are called to do is to remind the world that there are no left outs. How many of us here have felt left out at one time or another? Mm -hmm. Oh, you laugh. Doesn't feel good, does it? And we have the ability to do one of two things. Well, probably one of many things. But we can react with out of our pain or we can heal from our pain. We can react out of our pain, or we can heal from our pain. We can be as angry and as vicious. There's no vicious tongues in here, is there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> we can be vicious towards another, or if nothing else, we can't find the right words to say. You know that old adage that mama said, if you can't find something nice to say, don't say anything at all. I have found works <laughs> in more opportunities than not until I can take a breath <laughs> and find the right words, or at least the calmer words to share <laughs> with someone. So friends, we are asked this time in the life of this church, as we enter into a new chapter, what is it that is on our hearts that we want to see ourselves do? What are some things that have been planted in your heart? This is a question that expects answers. Thoughts? What are some things that have come to you? Ooh. Okay, it's too... Th 
Ooh, yes, to become a GLBT giblet center <laughs> for the valley. Excellent. This church has, has a history of doing things such as that during the, the, when HIV hit, from my understanding, years ago. So to renew ourselves and to recommit ourselves to becoming the gay, lesbian, bi, trans, question, intersection, inter, I messed it all up, intersection. Yes, the intersection. To become the queer center in the valley. Perfect. Dance, to allow ourselves to feel joy and to find ways to come together socially to build those connections through dance. Comfort, to be a place where we can find comfort, whether that be through finding prayer with one another, whether it is in building relationships, whether it is in coming together as community. Love, to be a place where love is spoken. There's a song about that, isn't there? Love is spoken here. Fireside chat, to be a place that we can come together outside in that incredible, beautiful garden that does have a fire pit, and to tell our stories. To be a place where spiritual healing can happen, to be a place that people know that if they need spiritual healing, that MCC, United Church of Christ in the Valley, is the place to be. Amen? Contemplative. Yes. You know, the garden, one of the things about the garden is that my hope and dream, our hope and dream is that it is a place where you can do just that. Come to be in prayer, to be in contemplative prayer, in peace and in quiet, going around to the different areas in the garden just to be, to hear the water of the pond, to take in, to breathe in nature, the gift that God has given us, to be in prayer, silent prayer. Hmm? Joy, to be a place of joy. Blessedness, to be a place where we know we are blessed. So God has been talking to y'all, hasn't he? <laughs> and he, Mama and, Mama and Papa have been talking to us. This is excellent to hear. Do you hear yourselves? That God is planting seeds in your heart and in your minds. It says this community of faith, this place, MCC, UCC in the Valley is going to be this and more. To bring back into the world, and I do believe bring back into the world, or if not bring back, to at least amplify the message that is, that is alive but in pockets separated. And the voice of all of this, of compassion, of love, of joy, all of this and more, needs to be amplified, in my opinion, so that the divisions can come to an end. You know, they keep rising and keep rising, but I believe that with our children and with this vision, the world can change. And I say with our children because, you know, I it's been very fascinating for the last few years. Some of you who follow me on, on Facebook know what I did this week. There's this musical called Hamilton, right? Incredible musical called Hamilton. And I have heard all sorts of things about this, all good. And I have been listening to kids. I went to a Rainbow Family Camp years ago, a couple years ago, about four years ago where they, it's, it's for gay and lesbian families, and you know we have a camp up in um, San Bernardino um, Mountains at a UU camp, campground. And the kids do a talent show every year. And I, never, I will never forget, like four years ago, these kind of preteens got up and did, the, did a couple numbers from Hamilton, and I'm like, Hamilton, what is this? Alexander Hamilton? I didn't get it, I'm like, you know, kind of a more obscure figure in, in, you know, the founding of the country. And I was like, I, I didn't get it. But I, it was curious. I thought, wow, something is happening where youth, where our youth are finding inspiration from the founding fathers and mothers of this country who were dreamers, who were dreamers. And then for the last two years, I've been listening to my daughter sing 
just about all of the songs. I saw two of her friends, she had a little friend over the other day, and they were going on back and forth singing every words of the song. <laughs> so of course, mom had to look into this, so I did. And through a, a different series of events, I was able to actually score tickets, yes. <laughs> this last week in Costa Mesa, and this is a side note, complete tangent, but it was a fun. I was able to keep it a secret. And, yeah, I know. And I pull up to pick up Maya. She's waiting outside. I said, come on. She's like lollygagging. So I get out of the car, and she's like, well, Mom, what are you all dressed up for? I said, just come on. What? What? Not? I said, I have a surprise for you. She says, what? Oh, you got a new Littlest Pet Shop for me? I said, no, get in the car. <laughs> she says, what? So I handed her the printout of the tickets, and she's reading it. She's like, and when she got to Hamilton, she like, fell on the ground. <gasps> and she got up and she looked at me, she's like crying. And I said, I heard you. I heard you. So after two years of waiting, we got to see it. And I got to tell you, and honey, it was 16 rows back right in the center and everything they say about that show, it was amazing. But I'll tell you what was more amazing. I asked her, I said, what's your favorite line in the show? And she said, there's a million things I haven't done yet, but just you wait. It's a line that Alexander Hamilton says. There's a million things I haven't done yet, but just you wait. I said, this is what's inspiring our kids. I said, well, what else? Those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. Those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. And I will tell you, it gave me hope that something such as a, a very ingenious musical that combines uh, traditional singing and rap and dance and just everything could inspire grown-ups and children alike, but especially children, to believe, just you wait. To inspire children to say, I'm going to stand for something. Which reminded me of something that this guy named Jesus said a few times. And one of them, I love how he put this one, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out. All righty then, I think I get the message, God. We need to stand for something. Which then leads very well into what it is that we want to stand for, church. And I, I realize that in all of the stuff swirling around, I, I don't want us to stand for politics. I want to stand for Jesus. I want us to make sure that we take a stand on the teachings of Jesus. That what we do and everything that we do in our personal life and as our corporate life has to do with following the teachings of Jesus. And you know, many of you who know me know that when it comes down to trying to make a decision, it doesn't matter if I have a political opinion, I have to sift it through what, did Jesus, what would Jesus say about this situation, right? And over and over again, I find that Jesus says we have to care. We can't stand on the sidelines. We have to engage. And not just, again, on political realms, but in our own personal interactions with people. We have to go through our own stereotypes to make sure that we can continue to build the bridges that need to be built. You know, it was interesting. I had a situation this week where I realized, oh, Thank you, God, for opening up another window into an area where I need to improve. You know, I was here uh, during the week working, and I was the only one here, and I had the door open, which I often do so I can hear the water. And somebody walks in, who looked obviously as if they um, were living on the streets. And she was a little kind of lost, and was probably not completely present. 
A and I'm going to tell you, my first reaction is, <gasps> my second reaction was, shame on you, Pat. Take a breath. Take a breath. I said, hey, how you doing today? Good. Would you like water? Yes. I got her a cup because she had a little Dixie cup. So let me get you a bigger cup. Then she used the rest. Can I use the rest? I'm like, well, yeah. She came out. I said, are you hungry? And she said, yeah. So I opened the fridge because we had this great food left over that Lane had cooked last week. And I fixed her up a portion of those incredible beans and the apple cobbler, yum, yum. And then it did to two to-go boxes. And I heated it up and served it to her. And, and I said, you know, here, take this and so you have something. I asked her what her name was. Her name was Christine. And I realized that God needed to stop me for a moment and remind me about what I preach to you. Every one of us is a human being, no matter our circumstances. And sometimes our circumstances put barriers up between us, between our preconceived notions. And we forget to deal with each other as human beings. And we need to deal with each other as human beings first and foremost, because we haven't seen everything yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. There's a lot of things to do, and one of those is to break down those barriers. I was having a conversation with Norm. I don't think you mind if I share the story. Um, Norm, as some of you might know, I, I've known him, gosh, 15 years, probably as long as I've been in, in L.A. He's a member over at our sister church, Founders, and he actually, I'll just tell on him for a moment, when I organized a response to Katrina way back when, he was one of the ones who drove out there with uh, uh, literally three truckloads of supplies to help the folks who had nothing. And, and he went back and helped rebuild homes for people. Well, he's in a situation now where he has no home, literally. And one of the RVs out there is his. And we were talking about the story that he was in a neighborhood and there was a neighbor who didn't like that there was an RV in the, in the, on the street. They called the police multiple times. You know, the other neighbors in the neighborhood have signing a petition, wrote a petition up to say, this man helps the kids at the Dream Center. Th this man watches out for our neighborhood. This, this man helps us. And I said, isn't it interesting, Norm, that instead of seeing the person people see the RV, right? Right? We're faced in so many ways and in so many situations to be called to look past what are our barriers, what are your barriers? What are barriers that you have with other people? I, I know what some of mine are, you know? I think, Sean, you can attest to this. I, I have a problem if people fly a Confederate flag and, you know, and the such. But I, I have to remember they're a person too. I have to find a way to find common ground, right? Scary. <laughs> Doesn't always work, but at least I have to try. And I have to because God calls us. I believe God calls me to be one of those bridge builders. I'm going to ask Jeff to cue up and to show you something. It's about f four minutes. This is from a group of people, clergy folk. Remember uh, uh, Reverend, uh, um, the right Reverend Curry, who spoke at Diana, um, excuse me, Diana. Whew, there was a slip. <laughs> Harry and Megan's wedding last week, and we talked about it. He's the lead on this. I want you, I want you to take a moment and, and, and watch this. It's about reclaiming As church Jesus. elders from around the country, from different denominations, races, and genders, we are witnessing perilous and polarizing times. And we believe the soul of the nation and the integrity of faith are at stake. Our country's leaders have co-opted the name of Jesus. So we are commending this statement and reclaiming the name of Jesus. It's our duty as leaders of the church to speak truth in humility and love. But when politics undermine our theology, we must examine those politics. Therefore, we believe. We believe. We believe each 
human being is made in God's image and likeness. And that racial bigotry is a brutal assault of the image of God. Therefore, we reject the resurgence of white nationalism and racism on many fronts, including the highest levels of political leadership. And we reject any doctrines or political strategies that use race as a tool to divide us. We believe we are one body. In Christ, there's to be no oppression based on race, gender, identity, or class. Therefore, we reject the misogyny, harassment, assault, and abuse of women in our churches and country. And the silence that allows this sin to endure. We believe how we treat the hungry, the stranger, the sick, the prisoner, is how we treat Christ himself. Therefore, we reject the policies that would abandon the most vulnerable children of God. We deplore the growing attacks on immigrants and refugees. We will not accept the neglect of low-income families and children. We believe that truth is morally central to our lives. Jesus promises that the truth will set us free. Therefore, we reject the lies that have invaded our political and civil life. The normalization of lying presents a profound moral danger to the fabric of society. We believe that Christ's way of leadership is servanthood, not domination. Therefore, we reject any moves toward autocratic political leadership and authoritarian rule both of which threaten democracy and the common good. We believe Jesus when he tells us to go into all nations and to make disciples. Our churches are part of an international community, and we should in turn love and serve all its inhabitants rather than seek first our country's dominance over all others. Therefore, we reject an America first philosophy as theological heresy. We share a patriotic love for our country. But we reject xenophobic or ethnic nationalism that places our country over others. 2,000 years ago, claiming Jesus is Lord was a dangerous and political act. Because if Jesus was Lord, Caesar was not. 2,000 years later, we are reclaiming that name of Jesus. Reclaiming his holy and powerful name from those who would co-opt it and wield it to seek their own gain. Jesus is our light in the darkness. In moments of moral crisis like this, it is time for a fresh confession of faith. Will you join us in reclaiming the name of Jesus. I think that succinctly puts it together to say, what's a vision of our church for the future? I think not just reclaiming the name of Jesus, but living Jesus in a way that says, Yet another shooting happened this week in a school in Indiana. And that indeed we have to find ways to change the culture so that kids, especially young boys, don't resort to violence to settle a score. That we have to live in a world, live in a country, live in a state, it cares about the, and I, uh, and I, I fact-checked this, the cares that 1,475 children who were taken as they crossed the border from another country have been lost in the system. Mm -hmm. And that we as a country and as a people, as they said, have to care about what happens to our children, not just American children but South American children, 
European children, African children. And when we are called to care for God's children, it means all children. And that we can, in our own way, find solutions to complex problems that allows compassion and love and joy to still be at the center. So, and if, if you think that things like this aren't important, I, I just want to share part of one of the comments. And if you go on, online, on Facebook, you can see this, and you can go to YouTube and read some of the comments. I was floored. Somebody said, liberal propaganda in the guise of reclaiming Jesus. These Pharisees should be ashamed for manipulating the word of God into collusion, inclusion. Ah, I love it. We're manipulating God's word into a message of inclusion. <laughs> Most of these fake clergymen are in fact homosexual and they are using the pulpit to indoctrinate people into accepting what God called an abomination. They subtly talk against this administration the propaganda is nothing but paid advertising for the liberals who coincidentally don't believe in Christianity at all, but seek to eradicate it completely. These scribes are uh, in no position to condemn anyone or anyone for the, anything that's happening for that matter. Friends, I'm not a so-called Christian. I don't believe one Christian is better than another. But I do believe that as a follower of a Christ, we are called to look at our own lives, our own prejudices, and break down those walls. And that as we do that, find the way to spread the message that Jesus brought to all of us to say, we are all God's children. Do something about it. Friends, we ain't seen nothing yet as a church. And there's a million things that we can do. Just you wait. Amen? Amen. Amen.
God uses us, God molds us, and guides us. And so friends, one of the ways that that happens is by us being able to give of our gifts, of giving, giving of our talents. And the offering baskets will be passed. I invite you to put your offering in and as well as your prayers. Precious Creator, we ask blessings upon these gifts and the law as well as the giver. May these be multiplied by your love so that we might go forth and to serve your world so much richer, so much more deeply. I ask this in your precious and holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the communal part of our prayers, uh, please respond with God hear our prayer. Today we offer up our prayers as a community, a community few imagined many years ago, but God did. A community that sprang out of God's wisdom through those that came before us. A community that God arranged for those who loved her wisdom. I invite you to join with me in saying God hear our prayer after each prayer. We thank you, gracious God, for this community that is now, has, is now brought to the threshold of a new beginning. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, God hear our prayer. We thank you for the beauty of this world and acknowledgement of our responsibility to serve as caretakers, not conquerors, of this precious planet. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God hear our prayer. We thank you for each other, the blessings we are, and the blessings we bring. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. We pray for those affected by conflicts and unrest in the world, especially Syria, Israel, Santa Fe, Texas. Grant us the courage to act to bring peace, comfort, and healing into these places. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. During this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who lost their lives in war. May we work with your spirit, God, to bring an end to war so that no more will die in this way. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of this world that they may be led by your wisdom and not their fears or egos. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. We pray for our denominations and their leaders. May we as your church in this world embrace and proclaim your way of love for all. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. Grant us the wisdom to listen to the nudges of the Holy Spirit so that we may catch on fire with love and set with your divine imagination the next step for us to take as a community and in our individual lives. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayers. 
And when we do not listen to the nudges of the Spirit, grant us our not so gentle ways to keep us from resting on our perceived laurels now that we have called a full-time pastor. <laughs> hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayers. Grant us the courage to dive deep into our depths, collectively and individually, so that we and you can bring out the best in us and for us. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayer. Now we lift up the prayers offered here today. Uh, Sean Villareza and uh, Jamal, I'm grateful to reunite with someone dear to my heart. So I pray for us and guide us on our relationship and let it grow each time. For my godfather, Anisio Andy, um, uh, and uh, my sister, happy Memorial Day. Whatever the decision uh, by my employer, employer, prayers and guidance, whatever you lead. New good place to live. A two bedroom with a great roommate. From Phil. Great Philip. Yeah. Prayers for um, healing, uh, Matt, uh, Dell, uh, old bosses of Joel's uh, Willie with Miami, Florida. Joel and John uh, this next week will be uh, receiving a six-year-old uh, boy into their home yeah. to foster a partner. Not sure of the first name. Looks like Dakota. Um, really, a young boy who has was taken him to the hospital because he shot himself and is on life support. Co-worker of John's son. Let's pray for his recovery. At this time, I would like to invite you to say the names of those you would like to pray for. After the names are called out, please say, hear us, O God of wisdom. Can get some more time for the names. Brian, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, and Manfredi. Frank. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our prayers. For these and all prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, God, hear our prayers as we sing together. Amen.
table is set. Elements are present. There'll be a chalice and host on the side table for anyone who wishes more intimate and direct communion. For the rest, we will have servers up front and Reverend Pat and myself come forward as the ushers direct you. May dip the host in the juice. You may take a blessing if you wish. And it's all here. All are welcome. Thank you. 
friends, we receive the, this portion of communion for those who could not be here in body, those who either they were out of town, they are not well, they are in prison, or they are serving in our military overseas, or even in this country. So we receive this for them. And this cup we receive for those who are, could not be here in spirit, those who have departed, those who do not feel worthy, those who haven't found their way to this space yet, we receive for them. <coughs> Friends, we are grateful that we have had the opportunity to come to this table, to come to this community, to be fed in all ways that we can be fed. And so now as we prepare to leave, I'm going to invite us to rise as we're able to join together in our closing song, Song of the Soul. <laughs> Friends, before I forget, because I did it earlier, if anybody has seen a uh, black glasses case, please see JB. Uh, and for all of us, as we leave from here, I'm going to ask that we completely enjoy the rest of this long weekend, hopefully with one another. There's a great feast you can enjoy and go into the garden as well to share your coffee and juice. And most of all, friends, as we leave from here, I do indeed hope and pray that we leave renewed and refreshed with the passion of Pentecost, that we know that we're going to go forth from here knowing that there are a million things to do. Just you wait. Go forth and let's do 
999,000 of those. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.